Hello everyone, I'm Greg from Handcrafters House and today I'm going to talk about Pro Stitcher buttons, what they do and how they work in a bit more explanation because they can be a little confusing if you're brand new to Pro Stitcher and just want to learn more about it. So let's get straight into it. We have our tabs across the top. We have our file, edit, area, modify, repeat, Pro Stitcher and then we have view and tools. So we're going to start off in the area because that's generally what you need to start off quilting. So let's have a look at it. We have our area tab, so the third one across is our area. In here we have our two corner and our multi point. So let's start off with two corner. Two corner works by placing a point in the top left hand corner of your quilt and the bottom right hand corner of your quilt. But of course, we can't get our whole quilt in the screen at once. So we can only do what our throat space allows. So I'm in simulation mode here, so you'll notice my crosshairs are green. On your machine, they will be orange. And when you move your machine, that will move the crosshairs, cross because the crosshairs relate to where your needle is. So we're going to put our needle or my crosshairs in the top left hand corner about an inch over my quilt. So let's say it's over here. And then I'm going to hit two corner and that will place a ding. The next you're going to do is move your machine to the bottom right hand corner of your quilt which is not all the way at the end of the quilt, it's just going to be about an inch to the right. So for me, it's over here, and then I'm going to hit two corner again, and we hear that ding. So from there, we have a pink rectangle. And we can see on my right hand side, my width of this quilt is 47.92 inches, and my height is 18.66. So, of course, my quilt height is longer than that. So all you need to do is type in what your quilt length is. So let's just say 60 inches. So I'm going to type in 60, press enter, and then down the bottom here, my house is my refresh, which then shows me my quilt size. So that is to do a two corner. Really quite simple. So let's talk about multi-point. So multi-point works by, as it sounds, having multiple points to create your area. So let's have a look. I'm going to do a bit of drawing this time. So I have my quilt. Let's say I have my quilt here. And then let's say I've got an area that I want to place a quilt block into. So let's say this is my quilt block here. We can see it's a square, but it might not be a perfect square, which is where multipoint comes into it. Because if we try to do a two corner here, because we're using a computer, it's going to be exact. So if I did a two corner, it would put a point here and put a point here, it would do a perfect square, which we can see my original square is not. Right? So this is where our multipoint comes in. So let's get my square again, my block. And then I'm going to use my multi-point button to place a point in each corner. So depending what machine you have, you can use your extra button on your handlebars or you'll have to press the button on your screen. So I'm gonna go in and place a point here, place a point here, here, and here. So I've basically placed a point in each corner. And when you do an area, it will always close the area. So as long as you have three or more points, it will create an area to whatever shape you need. So that is our multi-point. So two corner, I would use for my edge to edge designs and multi-point for everything else. Okay, let's go on to our next one. So our next one is going to be mostly in our modify tab. So a modify tab is where you find all your adjustments that you want to do to your design. 
So let's have a look at the screen. So from area, we're going to hop to our modify. And we can see I've got all these different options, but they're all grayed out because they all relate to a design. So I have to have a design for any of this to work. So let's grab a design. So we've got our design folder. Let's go to PS Designs and let's do our blocks. So I'm just going to choose a nice simple block here. Let's just do this one. Block leaves 10. Click open and it will open our design. So we've got our design. So let's go back to our modify tab and then all our buttons are now active. So we're going to go to reposition. So reposition works to our crosshairs, right? So remember our crosshairs is where our needle is. So any button you press on our ribbon bar will open up another section on the right hand side, right? Which is your sidebar. And we can see we've got all different ways to reposition. We can reposition to our start point. So let's get rid of that area. Make it all nice and big. Over here. So we can reposition to our start point. So our start point here is in the dead center of the design. And we can see it's just going to move our design to our crosshairs. We can do it to the top left corner, to the top right, bottom left, and bottom right. We also have our nudge capabilities down the bottom, where you can actually nudge it by currently 0.01 of an inch. Or you can go in and tell it what increment you would like to do. So we could move it at one inch at a time. So that is our reposition. Works to our crosshairs. Then we have our next one that I'm going to talk about, which is the align. So align here, see, it's going to grade out again because align works to our area. So let's create an area. So I'm going to my area tab, and this time I'm just going to do a two corner. And then I'm going to bring it over here and create another two corner. So we've got our area. We've got our design, so let's go back to our modify, and now we can see our align button is active. So if I go align, I now have in my side panel all my different alignment options. I can align it to the left hand side, I can align it to the right hand side, I can align it to the center of my area. Then I also have my stretch. So if I wanted to, I could stretch my block right out to the sides and right up to the top and the bottom to make it fit perfectly. So remember, a line works to your area and reposition works to your crosshairs. The next one we have here is skew. So depending on what version of Stitcher you're running, will depend on what options of SKU you have. So if you're running the latest version, you will have SKU, border SKU, and triangle SKU. Previously, there was SKU 1 and SKU 2, and before that, even more. But they've limited them now because they've done a really great job of making it work. So SKU works. Let's talk about SKU. We have our area again. We have our design. Let's say, a flower like that. From there, what SKU does, it grabs that design and puts it into our area as full as possible. So what will happen is we get our design and it will go and touch each side of that area. And it will distort it just a little bit to fit it in. So let's have a look, see how it works on the computer. So I'm going to clear this design and then I'm going to grab it again, just a fresh one. So I have my area, I have my design, so let's skew it in. We go modify, 
skew, and we've got skew and border skew. So let's give them a go. And we see that, perfect. So we could no skew it and try border skew. Again, it does it perfectly. Because we've got a nice square area. So let's try it with an area that is not so square. So let's make a multi-point area, which may be supposedly square with patchwork, but might not be so square when it comes to the computer. So I've got my design, I've got my area, so let's try to skew it in. And there we go, we can see it's gonna stretch itself right out to hit each corner. So let's try border skew now. And again, it's done a great job of doing that as well. So the border skew works better if you've got a long area with multiple points, not just the four points. Great. So once you've adjusted the design, what you need to do is what we call baseline. So baseline works by how I like to think of it. It's you've got a design, you've done all this editing to it, and baseline stops it. So baseline keeps it at this new design. So say we had our quilt, right? We've gone and created an edge to edge design like that and that repeats multiple times. So right now that is one, two, three designs just joined together, right? So if I've gone and done that and then try to do something else to it, it might have a little moment because right now it's just three designs that are on top of each other. As soon as I hit baseline, what happens? It joins those designs together to create one design, right? So if you're ever having problems with anything, just after you've done any adjustments, baseline it and then go on to your next thing, right? So baseline is really important. So any, after any adjustments, hit your baseline and you'll be good to go. So they are a few of the main buttons that I use when using Pro Stitcher. Of course, there's a whole bunch more and I might explain those later. If there's anything that you don't understand or need explaining further, let me know and we can certainly make a video just for you. So until next time, we'll see you everyone.